And it's another beautiful day full of adventures in Vietnam. In today's episode you will explore Pink Church of Vietnam and also interact with local kids up there, see the start of Ho Chi Minh Trail and so much more. Join me into this adventure of untouched Vietnam countryside. <laughs> Back to the road! So guys, before the zero kilometer of Ho Chi Minh Trail, if you are coming from Hanoi side, you might want to stop by... Sorry, it's impossible to pronounce, but yes, you might want to stop by this place, which is a vibrant pink Catholic church, almost a hundred years old. Obviously, I decided to stop by it, and it was a highlight of the day, honestly, because I got blessed by interacting with local kids. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good. And you? Hey, <laughs> chef. <laughs> Can you actually count how many kiddos were around me? I honestly lost myself. You don't care. Yes. Very cool. Yes. You're showing me something. What's it? Ah, Maria. Maria. Mira, con te. Mira. And in the end, I just decided to buy ice cream for every single one, so they will be a bit more happy. What do you happy? Huh? Vietnam? Vietnam, Vietnam. Alright, we're gonna move forward. Before the lake of Ho Hon Mat, there is a cool resort and place to chill, which might work as a pretty nice getaway before your Ho Chi Minh Trail adventure. You see those little buildings down there? They stand out. It's by the lake. Just look pretty. I mean, you have some like catamarans and you can drive with the boats. I think so. They do some sort of like singing here, live, live music. Because you can see the stage. Just like place to chill. It's on the way to Ho Chi Minh Trail from the from the main road. Like you will see the lake. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye. This reminds me of communism. You see that hammer and sickle? That's a Lenin. Hey. There's a Mr. Lenin out there. I don't know who is the second guy, but that's a Mr. Lenin, the Russian USSR. Oh my days. I'll talk about that a little bit later, because uh, the problem is every country I visited in Asia, like Indonesia, Philippines, uh, India, Sri Lanka, you see the background of the people. You see background, religion, traditions and all of these things. But regards Vietnam, it's a little bit different. It's kind of tough. You don't feel the background when you're trying to talk to people, when you when you approach people, when you just look around and see what they're doing, how they live. And my mom, she actually gave me an idea yesterday when we when we had a chat over the phone. She told me, isn't, isn't like Vietnam like kind of communism country? And I'm like, yeah, it is. It is still like, sort of communism and that's why probably I don't feel like religion and traditions and overall background of the people I don't know why but I'll talk 
I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So guys, we just arrived to Ho Chi Minh Milestone Zero, which is down there. Crossing Ho Chi Minh Trail is probably one of the most popular things for foreigners to do in Vietnam. Getting a bike and drive through historical parts of Vietnam is something everyone needs to do at least once in a lifetime. The reason why this trail is famous because back in the days during the war, the Communism Party of Vietnam, which were located up north, they helped uh, partisans from south of Vietnam to bring weapons, food, groceries and all of these things. Like this trail was upgraded for like 20 years during war. Every year it was bigger and bigger and bigger with way more routes through Laos, through Cambodia. Another adventure boy! So yes my friends, subscribe to this channel, like this video and we will start another part of adventure in Vietnam. The first night I decided to stay in Tan Chong district. Sorry, might spell it again wrong which is a home of Tang Chong Tea Islands, but also a place where actually I tried meat and not just a basic meat, a dog meat for the first time in my life. And uh, probably a last time. I'll make a separate video about that, guys. But for now, let me introduce you to the owner of guest house, Mr. Ho, as we cooked some meals together. <laughs> This one will take time. It'll take a time. Yeah, yeah it'll take a lot of time. Yeah, because I think that it is what it is, boys. Yeah, it's a first time experience. I'm cooking something and I'm showing how to cook something to Vietnamese people. What it says? This one, this one. This is one um, the meaning for you uh, do the good thing every day. Ah, Same, uh, something like a prey? Uh, if you. Work, uh, try to working hard, study, and you will ha have a good knowledge. Uh -huh. uh, if you do the good thing for other people, the they other will people will, 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 yeah, will yeah. turn back to you. Like it's just uh, things that you should do in your life. Yeah. Exactly. It, yeah, uh, yeah. it uh, uh, talk about uh, what you should to be, to do in your life. Uh -huh. uh, to become a um, good. To become a better person. Uh, yeah, better person. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're cooking. <laughs> yeah, even when you're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. <laughs> so all it looks something like this. Enjoy your meal. <laughs> the next morning was all about visiting tea islands. Since I visited Sri Lanka and India before, I fell completely in love with tea fields overall, so there was no chance I could have skipped this adventure here in Vietnam. The boat itself is huge, like it can actually fit like, I don't know, 20 people probably. I asked about the price, uh, they say it's 20,000 dong. It's an hour round trip around tea islands with the option to jump into the island itself, enjoy some tea and just like enjoy the views. A good deal I would say for 10 dollars. Apparently you see rubbish everywhere. While passing by the islands I noticed that few islands have bungalows and shops inside, which means that actually, if you would like to, you might stay there overnight. A boat. That's a little translator. He's always walking with the iPad and Google Translate. And yeah, you can just have a walk around tea fields. Like, alright, it does look fresh, but as I know, uh, you don't use these leaves for tea. You're supposed to use the young ones. I'll show you if I find any. So the young ones are like light green color, and usually they're like uh, a pack of three leaves at once. So in Sri Lanka and in India, people take those leaves. Those ones are too old and harsh, so they don't use it for the tea. Maybe Vietnamese tea is a bit different kind. Because I cannot see any uh, light green leaves. 
honestly. Supposed to be something like that. The new ones, if you will compare color, you see how dark is this one. That's the old whip. And that's a new one, which actually should be picked up. So those ones, those ones, those ones, those ones. We have already a big group here. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Overall, the experience was kind of okay. I wouldn't say it was something super memorable. The most memorable thing will happen in the evening, which I will show you in the next video. And as I said before, it is trying dog meat for the first and probably the last time in my life. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and I see you in the next one. Bye.